Hi, um, I need to do an update and uh, let everyone know where I'm at. You're going to have to forgive me because I am eating my sandwich. I've got to go to work today, so um, I'm trying to fit a lot of things in at once. Anyhow, I've set my little camera thing up, so hopefully I can show you the um, the, le the paperwork that I'm referring to. Um, first, I might as well, um, I was contemplating whether or not to upload uh, separate little intervals to do with the different things that I'm dealing with, i.e. Uh, doing a little video clip of um, the Santander response and a little clip of the Moorcroft response and, um, and then my response from the council tax. Then I figured I ain't got a lot of time and I mean typing up lots, lots of different entries. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bunch it all together and try and give um, a quick overview of where I'm at and uh, what kind of responses I've had and you know, a little update on where I'm going with it. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to the next screen. So this is the response. If anyone's seen any um, of me upload to do with me ESA saga, and basically I got paid a lot of money by the Employment Support Allowance, and uh, I wasn't um, under any claim as far as I was concerned. They told me that I was no longer entitled to it. So they gave me um, they gave me a load of money. I didn't realise that they'd given me the money. I'd phoned up, um, I'd sort of inquired as to what, you know, what was going on. Anyway, check out that blog. But I've got this response from them since. Uh, let me find that. Or oh, I can read it off the screen. It's a bit smaller, my screen, so you might be able to see it better. Oh, I'm going to have to read it off the screen. Right. Um, so they say that. They're writing about the contributory element. I don't, I'm not quite sure what they're getting at here because they're saying that for the period of up to the 18th of November 2014, in the year of 2014 to 15, the tax year paid a total allowance of blah, 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 blah. So, and they're saying that this is added as earnings. So I'm not, I'm assuming they're going to tax me on this money that I wasn't entitled to. And then they paid me anyway. So I'm going to have to figure this one out. I might give them a call. So I'm thinking, they paid me in error. I've offered to pay it back to them in instalment. But if they've paid it to me in error and I'm paying it back to them in instalments, I don't then expect to get taxed for something that got given to me because otherwise I'm still paying essentially. Do you see what I mean? So, um, for something that I didn't need to pay for. I shouldn't have had this income. And it was a total error that it got spent. Like I say, I thought I was getting some other payment to do with my job. So, um, anyhow, that was the first... I got this letter. This is dated the 17th, I believe. And, uh... Is it? Yeah, that's dated the 17th. And it's from Tim Savage, They're the guy that I'm yet to track down. I've been a bit lazy of late, and um, I haven't done a lot of a lot of work. I think I just hit a bit of a wall, and it was a bit of a meltdown moment. I needed to step back from it for a bit and take a bit of a breather. So anyway, I'm, I'm yet to find, find try and track this guy down. I want to convey with him, but I will make sure that I blog it. Anyhow, so on the very same day, um, ESA have sent me. Um, a letter to let me know that my employment support allowance is going to stop. Thank God. Anyway, let me uh, pop this one up for you. There you go. So this is basically stating that um, it's basically stating that the uh, change of circumstances that I've reported it says that we have looked at your claim again following a recent change. We cannot pay you an allowance from the 19th of November. This is because you do not want to claim an allowance anymore. Clearly, then they've gone and put on um, on the on the end of that. You are required to immediately report any change in circumstances to us or the circumstances of your partner if you have one. Well. I didn't need to report any change of circumstances because I wasn't claiming employment support allowance. They told me I was no longer entitled to it. And as far as 
brought in any further change of circumstances, they are surely taking the Michael out of me. I mean, what are they talking about? Why on earth would I, uh, why would I inform somebody who I have no dealings with? I'm not supposed to have any dealings with. Why would I inform them of, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm, I'm ignoring that bit. This is obviously a generated letter and they've just added my name and address and tweaked it a little bit and forgot to take out that entry. So anyway, that's the um, employment support allowance. So moving on from that, I haven't, um, I haven't even given a response to that yet or anything. That's, this is still just sitting on the back burner, waiting for my next reaction to it. I really want to find out where they are in their investigation, how such, such a huge error um, got signed off. Anyhow, so what's the next one? I believe my next one is to do with Moorcroft. Now, obviously Moorcroft with Moorcroft, I understand that, um, you know, they're not even worth, sort of, they're not even worth picking on, really, <laughs> or playing with. But for me, it's a bit, a bit more of a case of, sort of getting my feet in and, and, I don't know, maybe just trying to build a bit of my own confidence because this isn't something that um, I do on a regular basis. Obviously, this is all a new new game. So I was just sort of doing it really to, to, to test the waters and, and check where I'm at with with. I suppose my knowledge and, and what I'm throwing at them. Anyway, um, they came back and they've written back to me. I've got two accounts with Moorcroft. One is for um, a Virgin Mobile and another one is for an O2 Mobile. They haven't responded at all about the O2 Mobile account, although they, um, the, both the letters that I wrote to them got sent off on exactly the same day. So they've responded to one but not the other. Anyway, my Virgin account this is the response I got from your version account. Let's take you over here. Oh God, if I can get it to work. There we go. Now, more Croft. Here we are. Right. So clearly, the um, it was only the debt debt one template letter that you can get on the um, get out of debt free website, but uh. I just sort of stuck that to them and, and, and send it off at the same day that I sent off for the um, O2 account. So anyway, this is the response I got from the Virgin saying that they have acknowledged the receipt of my recent correspondent and would like to confirm that this account is now closed on their system and that they're no longer directly assisting their client with this account. The control of the account has been returned to their client and they would ask that any future that any any future correspondence that I want to take up with directly with Virgin. Well, this is a little bit strange because, as far as I'm aware, Virgin sold the debt to Moorcroft. We all know how these people work. It's you know we're not we're not stupid anymore. We've got our eyes open. So um, if Virgin have sold the debt to Moorcroft, then it's no longer Virgin's debt. As far as Virgin's concerned, the debt's been paid. Moorcroft paid the debt. They paid it for me, which was really nice of them. But um, on the other hand, they, they can't say that they passed it back to Virgin because that makes that, that makes no sense at all. Not unless Virgin are going to rebuy the debt, in which case bigger fools them because I'm not paying anyone. So anyway, but this was a nice little touch because it gave me a little bit more confidence. Let me know that you know we're, we're obviously onto something in this game. So anyhow, that that's to do more. Cross. So moving on, Santander now. <clears throat> I've got a credit card with Santander. I built up a little bit of, um, I built up a little bit of debt with them. But uh, as far as I'm aware, I created the money. It's my money. My signature created that money, and they have since made interest off of my repayments. So they've made interest out of fictional money. They've made real money out of fictional money, which I'm a little bit pissed about, I've got to be honest. You know, I mean, whoever thought this uh, up was <coughs> obviously a little bit of a genius. God, I wish I'd got this idea. I'm clearly, clearly in the wrong ball game. And I wasn't born with the right silver spoon in my mouth. Anyhow, uh, Sandander, uh, they, I wrote to them. I gave them the first debt letter, the same, similar, you know, to do with banks and credit cards, again, off of get out of debt free. And um, I sent them their first letter. The response I got, unfortunately, um, I had already sent my second letter, and the very second, the very next day after sending my second letter, 
I got their response, um, which is a little bit interesting. So <coughs> let me take you through this. God, my sandwich is going stale. I'm going to apologize. I'm have to apologize. Sorry about this. I've not got long. You know, I've got to go and walk some dogs. You know, I've got to go and work in a library. Nice jobs, both of them. Anyway, so where was I? Oh God, where was I? Santander. Let me show you their response. Very interesting. So <clears throat> this is Santander's. Um, it comes in two pages. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of splitting it up for you. So they said, thank you for your, well, let me read it off the page, actually, because I'm going to lose myself. Right. So they said, thank you for your letter dated the 11th of April, 2015, addressed to Nathan Bostock, Chief Executive Officer of Santander UK. Well, I googled the Chief Exec. And um, as far as I was aware, I thought it was, uh, what was her name? Anna, Anna Boating Sands de Sadele O'Shea, basically Anna Boating. But uh, so that's who I wrote to, that's who I addressed the letter to. So unless I've got a new chief exec, which must be a new thing, I don't know, I'm going to have to Google this and check this out. But anyway, I certainly didn't address it to him, but it was addressed to the chief exec, so you know, at least it got to the the right person. Anyway, it said that the chief exec decided that obviously they were too too good to deal with the likes of me. So um, it says that they've passed their concerns on to on to whoever wrote this letter. Who wrote the letter? Francis Davison. So Fran anyway, the chief exec passed it to a minion who was then to respond on his behalf. So this is what he said. I understand from your letters you require evidence of the validation of the above account. Unfortunately, we consider the matters you have raised to have no legitimate legal basis. Do they now? I clearly gave them the legitimate legal basis as set out by the um, get out of debt free template. So are that, you know, that, is that their opinion? I don't care for opinion. Anyway, moving on. Unfortunately, we consider the matters you have raised to have no legitimate legal basis. You remain indebted to the bank in respect of the account, blah, blah. No adverse credit references relating to the account will be removed on the basis of the matters that you have raised. Really? So they're giving me a big fuck you. That's what that is. Um, your letter, oh, it gets better. Your letter attempts to write off a consumer debt under misguided principles such as a notar notar notarial. Oh, sorry, I do have problems with my language sometimes. Principles such as notarial protests. Well, I didn't really. Initially, I'm asking them to prove contract. I'm saying if they can't prove contract, then surely the debt is void. I'm not asking them to write it off. I'm saying that the debt doesn't exist in the first place. How can they write off something that doesn't exist? They're sort of making a little bit of an assumption here, aren't they? So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. You know, I'm torn really because it, they're trying to distract me with this bullshit. Which I have got to say, I am tempted to sit and pick apart and, and really go into. But the other part of me thinks this is obviously their ploy because it is such crap. This is such crap. Now, it all makes more sense when they move on. Anyway, so none of these concepts have any legal merit, really. Nor do they entitle you to the remedies that you seek in your letter dated the 11th of April. You are a resident of England. I mean this is where I'm thinking they're trying to goad me. They're trying to goad me to respond to their stupid little nitpicking points. 
and to move away from my you know from from the initial this is the what i'm reading in between the lines anyway i mean i don't know you make it out but it says you are a resident of england and wales and bound by the law act by the law acts of parliament including the consumer credit act 1974 in brackets the and they're putting little quotations act like they're trying to take a bit of a mic away and my uh my letter to them anyway let's carry on which governs credit agreements Note the word agreement. That's not a contract. I may have agreed. I, I, you know, the day that I signed a bit of paper to say that I agreed, I probably agreed. I agreed there and then. I agreed that I wanted that money and that I was prepared to pay it back. On that day, the date that I signed the agreement is the day that I agreed to that. Well, you know what? It's a woman's prerogative to change her mind and I've fucking changed my mind. As far as I'm concerned, I no longer agree. So, uh, especially now that I've worked out what the hell all this is about. I agreed with the information that I had at the time. Well, just like it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind, it's every human being's prerogative to educate themselves. And um, if you learn that you're engaging in what could be a fraudulent act against me, and, I, and I'm willingly participating in it, of course I'm going to change my agreement. I no longer agree. Anyhow, the document clearly states in the agreement uh, that the agreement is regulated by the Act. Act again, consent. Uh, I suppose in a, in a way an Act is an agreement because you're agreeing to consent to it, aren't you? Anyhow, um, on the 19th of July 2012, it, it became a properly, ex a properly executed agreement in accordance with the Act, and under Section 189 of the Act, you become a debtor. As a debtor, you have a duty to comply with the terms and conditions of the agreement. Note the word duty and comply. Hmm with the terms and conditions of the agreement, including the payment of any outstanding sums and any incurred interest. Oh, any accrued interest, sorry. You are obliged to fulfill these obligations. I am obliged. I mean, the English isn't that great there, is it? I'm obliged to fulfill these obligations. Anyway, should you fail to comply with your obligations under the agreement, and may breach, and the breach is not remedied within the relevant period. Your credit rating may be affected by, as the bank has a legal right and a duty as responsible as a responsible lender to inform the potential lenders of your breach. The bank is also entitled to assign the debt to a third party for collection, provided it gives you notice of the assignment. Oh, please do, please do, because there's so much more easier to deal with. I'm a lot more confident with a third party interloper. The bank is also entitled, yeah, okay, I read that bit. Um, at all times, the bank is aware of and complies with its duties under the Banking Code of Responsible Lending. Well, I've actually got a document up that I'm in, uh, well, I say I've started reading, I fell asleep after the first paragraph, so I'm really going to have to revisit that one. But um, I did get a document about some of the banking practices, so I'm going to have to read up on that and see what I can work out on that one and whether or not I come back because obviously trying to bait me um, the bank considers that the debt that it has debt that it has dealt sorry let me start again on that bit the bank considers that it has dealt with the debt right uh, the, I've got debt in my head now sorry I'm gonna start again <laughs> the bank considers that it has dealt with the points raised in your letter dated however if you have any genuine issues, genuine issues, oh my god, how patronising is that? If you have any genuine issues or concerns relating to the agreement, we request that you set these out in clear and straightforward language. <laughs> what like they do? Okay. Oh. I've never known a bank just to to um, put anything in clear language when you're signing something of you. 
you normally feel like you should have your solicitor present at all times. Anyway, um, straightforward language and send them to our complaints department at the above address. We will deal with any issues as appropriate and we will do our best to resolve the matter. <laughs> Clearly. Um, with regards to your request for validation of the debt, this constitutes a data subject access request. And this is where they, they tie it up with a nice and neat little bow. One that may know I wet myself. Anyway, here we go. If you require my own information, if you require this information, then there is a statutory charge of £10 for providing this information. £10. So you're struggling to make your payments, you're questioning the agreement, and you want, you want to have some evidence that the agreement exists. £10 charge. Marvellous, that'll do it. <laughs> Not really. I mean, is there some, who gets paid for making this crap up? Is there some little troll sitting in an office somewhere, you know, pondering away of the next sort of bullshit story that they can come up with to screw people over? Anyway, um, so they want they want their ten pounds for that. They're going on about where I have to write to get it from, and that they will um, once we have received the payment and letter, we will be happy to proceed with the request of your information. <laughs> For my information, my information. I mean, really, they're, what they're trying to do there is they're trying to make me feel like the burden of proof's on me. It's not. They want no money. They can take me to court, and then the burden of proof is going to have to be on them. I don't owe the money. They need to prove I owe that money. So, uh, as tempted as I am to bite on the bait. I'm not going to. As far as I'm concerned, they can go and shove it. I didn't show you the other two pages of that letter, but um, I'll break it down for you. So it's, if you want to pause and read it, you can by all means. But that's the second bit, uh, the second page, sorry, the first part of the second page. And um, here's the second part of the second page. Anyhow, um, if I have anything further to add, I'll try and be a little bit more up to date with myself and uh, blog a bit more often. At some point, it out that I'm being a bit slack. Um, I'd just like to mention um, anyone that watches this, if they haven't heard of them already, Freedom Rebels, go visit their site, be friendly people. Um, Axiom Curb. Great guys on Axiom Curb, got to go and visit them, they do um, a little radio blog, great stuff in there, and um, up to date information. UK column, I mean I'm giving you guys all a shout out, get out of debt free, go visit these people, open your eyes, see what these people have to offer, and become part of the crew. I'll be at um, the Nottingham Festival, oh Nottingham Festival, what am I talking about, Nottingham event, I'm running away from myself now. Um, I'll be at the Nottingham event, me and my son are going along with one of his mates. So hopefully, we'll see you all there. Peace.